Hello Uganda, good evening and welcome to this edition of the Hot Seat on 933 KFM. I welcome you, our listeners across this beautiful land, the Pearl of Africa. My name is Patrick Kamara. Tonight we shed a light on challenges that are faced by urban authorities. Yes, urban authorities and the challenges that are faced by them. And my guest this evening is actually the chairperson Alliance of Mayors in Uganda and the mayor of Nansana Municipality, Regina Bakitena Kazi. Regina, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thank you so much, Kamara, for allowing me to be part of this talk show. We are honored to have you and thank you also for having honored our invitation mm -hmm. to be on this show. You know, Nansana Municipality in the greater Wakiso Kampala metropolitan area has such a huge name. You'll hear people talk about Nansana most of the time. Sometimes <laughs> the good, the bad and the ugly. Mm -hmm. But you are the mayor of Nansana. What is it like to be the mayor of that <laughs> of that wonderful place that okay. the people talk about for many reasons? Okay. Uh, first of all, Nansana is a uh, one of the fastest growing municipalities in this country. It's, uh, of course, it was put the Act of Parliament 2015, and I was happened to be the first mayor. Okay. I'm also running my second term. Uh, but uh, when we came in Nansen, I had a bad name. But as I talk now, we have tried to improve, and our motto is uh, uh, Nansen Municipality of Choice. However, I mean, so the challenges, uh, like any other urban authority, uh, we, we have uh, an increasing uh, population. So far, if I can echo the recent census, uh, give us a, a, an increment of almost uh, doubling, because in the 2014, we had 360,000 people. But right now, we have a, over 800,000. But uh, 800,000, that is according to what the census... What are the, 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 and, and the, the provisional feeling, results. And I have a feeling, yes. yeah, those are provisional results, but yes. also considering the challenges they face, quite a number of people were skipped, they were never enumerated. I yeah. suppose you could be hitting a million and more. By the way, that is true because, uh, of course, after the census, when they closed, people were coming that me, I was not counted. But, of course, you, can, you have to give in the positive and negativity when you are trying to share the statistics. So when you look at the, the number I have, mostly 70% of my people are young people. They are between 15 up to 35. And when you look at uh, the landscape, first of all, when you look at national division and in Nawero division, those are basically the urban uh, division with the uh, highest population, fought by Gombe. Gombe is still a bit peri-rural, peri-urban, and also Busukuma. So when you look at uh, some of the factors that are making it to to this, there are some opportunity, of course, advantages. First of all, when you have uh, many young people, they are energetic, provided they, they are able to to do some labor. We can always uh, use them like. Uh, well, that 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 looks original. That looks like a potential. But yes. how far have you gone? as a municipality to harness the potential, the demographic potential you're talking about of 16, 25, and 35, that, those energetic. By the way, that's also a reflection of Uganda's population today. Yes. But how, how is it of an advantage? Because mm -hmm. it could also be a demographic catastrophe, that there they are, they're energetic, they're young, but then they have no jobs, they're unemployed. Yeah, first of all, we, we among the youth, we have those who are educated, and uh, we have those who have never gone to school. So we are even in Nansana? Yes, they are there. Who, people who have never gone to school? Yes, they, they don't have the opportunity. They are there. And currently, I have a project that's ongoing called the Youth Climate Fund. I thought in the, in the first beginning, when the donor had to put those, um, those con connotations that they need 15 to 24 out of school, I thought we shall, we shall not get them. But basically, those are the people whom they call the. the they, they, they are good at uh, people who, are, who never went to school, but of course they are so chaotic. And they call them Kasolo. <laughs> yeah, those, those who, who don't have a future. So basically they are also there. But also I have uh, a group of uh, people who have gone to school, those with a professional, whom we always invite to, to, to do innovative, uh, innovative projects. They, are, they also have that category. Then I also have a category that is in school. It's also part of the young people. So I just want you to 
for the benefit of our listener mm. to, to paint a picture or maybe tell us for the young people who are maybe have gone to school maybe they have a profession or they don't have a profession what plan do you have for the young people of Nansana and municipality what are they engaged in how are they <laughs> what are, what are, what livelihoods are they engaged in so basically when i became a mayor uh, i realized that uh, unless we 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 have a plan for the young people you can't manage Nansana. So what I did, uh, I, I came out with uh, a legacy goal. Legacy goal. That, that legacy goal was uh, it didn't come just out of the blue. Out of the blue, we had um, we had good partnerships with strong cities. It's an international organization that deals with reducing hate and extremism. So when we went to Nairobi in 2020, they said they gave us the background on how extremism is it all over, even at even at a global level. Mm -hmm. So they told us we had to share, uh, of course, the, the, the demography of our, of our young people. We had to share uh, the issues of uh, probably statistical data, of, of employment, all the other issues I had to go with. So when I came back, they invited back in, in Cape Town. So when we took, went to Cape Town under the African Middle Leadership Initiative, Nansana is a member. They told us each one of us to come out with a legacy goal. So being uh, a chairperson of, of all mayors in this country, I went also with a uh, mayor of Masaka. So my legacy goal uh, had to, 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 to be built around how I can be able to reduce unemployment among young people by 25% by 2026. So but one of the things you have to find out why, what makes the, the young people have the element of hate and to, what can make, it get, make them get radicalized, you know, sometimes maybe when they feel excluded, uh, sometimes when they feel they're not sharing on the national cake. So have you found out what is it that is making them have the element of it, feel that hate, feel to easily get radicalized? So first of all, uh, uh, these young people, when I did a study and a research, because I have a day for them in the office, it's every, every Wednesday. When I tried to share with them, I had to give them, uh, probably to give them audience to come and share what is making them read it, not to, to, to be how they are supposed to behave. So, some said that, you see, when I finished school, I had the hope of getting a job. But right now, I'm redundant. And you know, someone, when, if someone is redundant, it's a devil's workshop. So I had to see how can I mentor them. Because when you look at those people who are trying to strike, Unrest in Nansana. It's not about that people never went to school, but the issue of not being um, being a priority within uh, to be looked at. Like when you look at the national level, when you look at my budget for w what are the provision for the young people in terms of skilled labour, in terms of opportunity for employment, and also me as a mayor, I, uh, of course, I was constrained. I did have the, the opportunity to to recruit them. But, but, you know, uh, Madam Mayor, there are some government programs and mm -hmm. that are ongoing now, and I thought probably the young people would do partake of these. So the MIOG have hired the parish development model here. It isn't money coming to those parishes there? Can't the young people take advantage of these government programs? Do you know how hard it is? I don't know. You're the mayor. You should be able to... I'm telling you that's the, a political mm -hmm. language. Because if you look at uh, the, the number of young people who don't have jobs vis-a-vis -vis the allocation of the money that they give to a hundred million like every a, parish it's like a peanut okay because now let me give but has that money reached them Lanzana? it reached okay but when you look at the what are they using it for people who benefit from youth livelihood i give you an example they, we, we got over 500 million but there were issues of politics but this why, why five, how, how many parishes do you have? i have 29 then you should be having uh, about uh, 2.9 billion well, but was, was I giving you 2.9 billion? Because I'm, I understand every parish is supposed that to get is 100, the gap. 100 million. No, no, that's a gap. But you thought, if, you have a, if you have 10 parishes, <laughs> that's a billion. If you have 20 parishes, that's 2 billion. I think, I think the methodology of giving, the criteria of giving with somebody, they didn't follow the population. They were just, because you can't compare an urban area with a rural one. Because now look at let my me, population. Let me, let me ask, yes. as a mayor and as you understand the government policy and programs, which yes. I'm sure you are supposed to be uh, working on, how much money is supposed to come to every parish uh, under the, the parish development model? It, that, they say it's 100 million. Yeah, if you have 29, then that should be... And out of that, they say 30% should go for the youth. 30% should okay. go for the women. 
thirty percent should be the people with the disability, and thirty percent should be elderly. Is there anything that we are improving sincerely on a hundred million? No, if they <laughs> gave you, if a hundred million came for every parish, huh. Nansana should be having two point nine billion. That is that could do something. No, what I'm saying mm. for you are looking at 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 the general. Y yes, you think the two point nine is big, but the demand. Because now they give each person, each, 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 they don't look at a household, they look at a person. So now, you have <laughs> 800,000 people. Yes. And probably there could be more. And, and some of, majority of these are young people. Yeah, 70%. You, then you must be having a huge task that is almost not surmountable for you to serve them. Because what can you do for these? That's what I'm saying. It, it, in fact, I'm just telling young people, these government opportunities are there. But we need to do even to do more by becoming innovative. I'm just, because as I was saying, we got the money for the climate fund. Okay. And it was put in a basket where you invited young people to write proposals on how they're going to address issues of climate within the Nansana to contribute to our climate action plan. So some came out with trying planting trees. Others came out with a proposal on developing applications, apps, others on waste management, others doing education campaigns. And out of that money, if a group less of 10, they receive less than 7 million, they say if you spend three, you can use the four for your income generating activity. So have they come up with the innovative ideas that money can be put in? And do you see progress along that route? Like now we have one of group that of, I think, people who did IT. They came out with uh, an app called the Buddha application. That Buddha application has developed to help Nansana Municipal Council to improve on its action, uh, climate action plan. They are going, we are going to use it. They are going to take uh, our technical people through it. Then also the leaders at local level. So what uh, that app is supposed to chew or what? The app is going to help us to monitor abuse of environment within the municipality. If they, let's say if there is environment, someone is feeding a lesser wetland, we can use the app. Someone can always send a message on it, and the minister is able to receive it. Okay. If there is ongoing, let's say, uh, like in terms of uh, some of people is powering, let's say also wasting a wetland, it can be monitored. If there is going to be able also to map trees, if someone is cutting a tree because they will be using coordinates, we, are, we shall be able to 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 take to to take track so what, of what uh, is happening how, how is cutting a tree how can that be solved i suppose most of the land there is privately owned are, are you stopping people to from cutting trees on the on the land they own no we are saying you don't when you cut a plant and currently there are these uh youth climate fund uh, project trees that have been planted okay. the woodlots but still even if you plant, you plant a tree it is out to educate you that don't when you cut one plant another one. you have a bylaw on that or do you just have to appeal? We have already, we are, we are in the process of having a bylaw on uh, tree planting and also waste management and also wetland um, restoration. But council has not yet approved. Okay. Those are, because those are enabling roads that can help these young people to ensure that they are able to proceed with the planting. But also, how about the issue of crime? Because uh, for those who do not know Nansana very well, uh, they, will, they are always being told, you know, Nansana is an area that is infested with crime. I, I'm saying that with a tongue in cheek because uh, you know better. Yeah, by uh, how, how is that? How is that? Is that true or that is in the past? In the, it was in the past, and uh, I want to appreciate what we have done so far. Also, as I said, we have a two partnership. So we have uh, also a partnership with, with Stone Cities. And they are already supporting us in developing what we call a neighborhood watch model. So every after ten households, we have we have, uh, we, have uh, we, we are working with what we are with a city in South Africa called Stellenbosch. So they are hoping us to have come out with a model. So every ten they can register whether young people, whether women. So after registering, they get a certificate, register with the police, so that they are able to monitor, to be able to to to. To report, like now, probably if there's an issue with like a stealing, if there is like a terrorist attacks, they can always work with us okay. and also police to report. So currently in Nansana, why is it going very fast? Because of improved security now. All right. Yeah. Regina Bakitenakazi, Mayor, Nansana Municipality, we're going to take a break and the hot seat will be right back. Welcome back to 933 KFM and this 
is the hot city. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is Regina Bakite Nakazi, Mayor Nansana Municipality and Chairperson Alliance of Mayors in Uganda. We are trying to shed a light on the challenges faced by urban authorities and uh, from the perspective of the mayor. You, before we went to the break, we are looking on the issue of crime. And, 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 and Nansana used to be up there uh, back in the day when it come, came to crime. I remember even during the times of uh, a, poli a, very po uh, a very popular policeman who was later killed, uh, the late Kirumira. Mm -hmm. But also there was a time when they were killing uh, young ladies and then break-ins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You, as the mayor of that city, and uh, now you're serving your second term, mm -hmm. it must have been such a huge challenge for mm -hmm. you. I, I wonder how what you've done to reduce on the crime rate in Nansana. I think, uh, as I said, uh, that was probably one of the issues that uh, during my first time, which of course was a challenge. However, I remember it was the IGP, Jenu Kaihura. I had to work hand in hand with him. We had to deploy police, doing a lot of uh, policing. He even came and camped in Nansa and for almost three months. So we are trying to, to study, but of course, uh, looking at the reports, the women who are being killed were being dumped in Nansana, but they are not from Nansana during that time. Because a lot was done and we had to identify what is happening. They were saying these are the sexual workers, but of course like, there was an agenda behind. But eventually, when a political life came in, we had to do a lot of publicity, sensation to the people on how they should take care of their lives by then. So after some time, after camping in, a, in, a, in our place for three months, I think they even got some money. I don't know whether the issue was about getting money from the donor because I remember by then they got money from uh, from Ireland to come and help women because they are saying women are being killed because they, they're going to prom promiscuity. They don't have money. So they got the donor. Mm -hmm. Then after getting the money with the donor, they gave some few women there to start selling charcoal. I saw them sharing, making some groups. And that's how it ended. I just let me. I want to know where where Nansana Street is from. To, to up to, uh, does places of Katoke, places of Kinyarwanda, places <laughs> of <laughs> places of visit to Wamala Road and all that. Oh, is that all Nansana? Yeah, Nansana is really very big. You really have so it's a huge place. Yeah, we. I mean, it is straight from Nansana Division. Uh, even Kabulengwa. No, Kabulengwa is is in Wachito Sub County. Okay. So we, we have a boundary there around as we br as you enter Kayunga. Okay. That's where Nansana ends. We, we border with the Wachiso. Then we go, we come back to Nawel, Bombo Road, along yeah. Bombo Road. Yeah, I've actually seen on Bombo Road <laughs> towards the Kawempe there, I've seen well, Nansana municipalities. It always intrigues me. I'm like, I am this side of Bombo Road, and is also, this is also Nansana? Now there's Kawempe of Kampala Capital Store Authority, and then there's also Kawempe of Nansana. Yes, that's what I'm But where about. there is a market yes. called the Wekembe Market, yes. that's where we start. That is Nansana. Yeah, then we go up to Romansi. Okay. We, we border with the Bombo. Yes. Then along the Semuto Road, we go up to Chirolo. Okay. Then that's another division. That is the Gombe. Okay. Then after we come back to around the Gayaza Road, that is Busukuma. Busuk <laughs> <laughs> that's quite big. Busukuma, we go up to Mukono. There's a, a, a word called the Guruden. They have just worked on a carvat there called the Chiziri. Because now, the, the role of a, of a municipality is to improve connectivity. Yes. So now I can connect with the Mukono. So you see how big it is. We go to numbers as municipality. You, you, you come back at where there is uh, this uh, this is it Busiro East okay. in Ichiroro. Then you go up to Nansana and Inawel. So it's really big because it's something like 295 kilometers. I have actually seen the infrastructure development for areas over around Katoke yeah. is wanting, if you if I may tell you, uh, uh, connecting from Nansana. Mastroa up to Kinyarwanda, the roads are pathetic. So, yeah, first of all, <laughs> I understand, I agree, but uh, there is a uh, result we call, uh, when you look at infrastructure development, mm -hmm. the result we call Unura Road, those are for the central government. Okay. There is what we call the municipal roads, they call for connectivity, then the divisional roads, and also the local council. So those, those which branch of the auxiliaries, they are not mine. Okay. Me, the current road that I'm working on is the one from Wamala. Uh, it goes, it up, joins up, up to Nansana. Up to uh, around East Wamala? Yeah. Or after West Wamala? Be after East Wamala. Okay. Yeah, as, in fact, that's where we border with, uh, with the Wachiso. So we are, in fact, we are touching on that road. Okay. 
under transitional grant. But with the Greater Kampala, we are going to complete it. So how about when you look into Nabweru, for example, there are many tributary roads that enter Nabweru at different at different intervals, and I'm wondering, so those ones are not for you, the mayor, to look into? No, those ones, the Wamala is mine. Then as you live, uh, as you live uh, along Hoima Road, there's all called Otenga Road. That's the, also the Nabweru comes up to the Nansana Division. Then uh, there, there is what we call gas. The all that we are also going to sort of work on. The gas join is in Aweru, in Nansana, to Wamala, to the other major road. So now, okay, you have embarked on these roads, yes. including the Wamala road you're talking about. Mm. Road construction is very challenging, very expensive. Uh, who is funding this? Yeah, first of all, uh, we have uh, initially would have started on these roads in, in 2017. But when World Bank are delayed, we are able to ask what the zone we call a transition grant. So that transfer. So this is the USMID? No, it's the USMID, it was in Sydney Finance. Okay. You see, sometimes they have the, they always keep some money after okay. budget. So when you have a reason, so when you wrote a proposal by then, it was a minister, Unaibo Utime, who approved our plan because of they wanted to improve on, uh, on traffic along Bombo Road. You know, Bombo Road, when the president's going to, <laughs> to Bombo, it becomes too much. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are supposed to, to, to work on all the 9.2 kilometers, but along the way, we are able to work on three kilometers. So after that, when, when World Bank uh, became ready, they agreed that they are going to work on the rest. So these three, these three kilometers that we worked on, uh, have been compensated like we are going to work on new era to see how can we improve the that connectivity within within the, within Nansana division and also Nansana municipality. So we have that source of transitional grant from finance. Because I have seen a road that connects, I think, from a place called Kazo and goes behind and enters the Bombo Road from after Kawempe. Uh, uh, enters, and that uh, has really tried to ease the congestion. Uh, that road, it is the Maramuana. No, no, there's a tarmac road I've seen. Well, that the, the Kazada is Kazo for Kampala. Yeah, okay. That's then is the mine which I'm going to work on is the one of uh, this Kazo that passes via the market. We okay. are going to work it under Greater Kampala. So that's also another source of Greater Kampala. Then also we have what we call Odeg. Also, that money is given for office of the Prime Minister. Okay. Then also we have what we call local revenue. We also get money as a municipality and we are able from property tax and work on those. So that there is a, there's, there's a World Bank funded program that was launched last week by the president on Greater Kampala Mass Road Construction. I wonder how much money is Nansana getting on this program? Yeah, first of all, uh, this is going to be for five years. But of course, the renewal depends on the accountability. Okay. So for us in Uganda, we say you only count the chicks when they are there. Don't count when they are, you don't have them. So in this first phase, in the first phase, we are able to get 100 million. And that has been used under... Wait, 100 million? No, like, 800. Oh, 800 million, okay. Yeah. okay. 800,000, sorry. 800,000 what, dollars? No. <laughs> <laughs> 800,000 shillings. For, no, for what? For for 800 million, okay, what I'm saying, I think those are... Yeah, 800 million. Maybe 800 million. Yes. Okay. So for institution strengthening. Okay. So now that, that was done in the first installment, we did, we, we had to to do issues of um, uh, probable of uh, preparation. Okay. We had to prepare the people to okay. give a right of way. Okay. We had uh, to look at issues of the EI environmental impact assessment. More or less like a feasibility study. Yeah, uh -huh, that is it. Okay. We, to put into place uh, committees like the municipal government committee. And because see who it's the, very important. the people are going to be affected by that. That is the grievance committee. So all oh, that money went. Project affected persons. That is it. Sensitizing council, executive. That was done the first year. Then this second year, which we are running today, we are going to get 23 billion. Okay. So we are going to work on those roads. So the other, in total, for the five years, we shall get 183 billion. But it will depend if you do accountability, like we are seeing the US made. Okay. So, but that, were, that was, has been earmarked for Nansana. Okay. Regina Bakite Nakazi, Mayor Nansana Municipality. We're going to take a break on the hot seat. We'll be right back. Welcome back to 933 KFM. And this is the hot seat. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest this evening is the Mayor Nansana Municipality, who's also the chairperson of um, Alliance of Mayors in Uganda, Regina Bakite Nakazi. Uh, Regina there is an issue of waste management in <laughs> Kampala, in Uganda. If you look into all the cities in Uganda and towns, they are choking on garbage. 
how is your city, how is your municipality faring on the matters of waste management? Mm. I think, Kamara, one of the major issues that we have been overlooked by city administrators is the issue of waste. Mm -hmm. Nobody th never thought of it. However, it's becoming a, an issue because uh, you see Kampala being there for so many years with no plan. Because dumping is an old age, if you mm -hmm. have, for us who have moved, who have benchmarked. Mm -hmm. Because under our UAA, when they take out benchmark in Tanzania, so when you went to Dar es Salaam, they have a big treatment center. So I think uh, leaders should take it uh, as a priority to ensure that cities plan for garbage management. Because looking at Nansana, for us, we had seen it earlier, and uh, we had the purchased land. Mm -hmm. In, uh, for a landfill? Again. No, it was not going to be a landfill because we had already benchmarked. It was supposed to be a treatment center, a treatment plant. And what was holding us was the issue of, uh, because we went ahead with the donor support of ICLE to under uh, Triple GI and the GI Z. In fact, even the Kampala was part of the program. Mm -hmm. They had to make us designs, which I already have. Even the who had a design. Even I think in table among others, but the issue was the the way to get the money to construct the plant. Because kind when you look at Guru, we went to Guru to benchmark under the World Bank program. They already got f I think European Union gave them five billion, and they're already working on a plant, a big one on a, I think they have over forty acres. So I think the way to go, right now, is to see how do we start with, uh, as much as we are going to, 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 to construct a plant, like in Nansana, and uh, we are trying to look for the money. So you already bought the land, identified The land we have it, and already. And where is the land? The land is in Memvubo, Sukuma. Okay. So what we are waiting for, we are waiting for the EIA, because we are supposed to get an environmental impact assessment, on, because they already are well, people who are staying there, even if they are to construct a plant, they have to be guided technically. But leaving that alone, we are looking for the money. So what we are doing as a municipality, because we are getting, pro we p by the taxpayers are paying money under property tax. Because we have got, uh, we have also got a lot from property tax. We have already purchased equipment, among others. So we want our next finance, we have to prioritize uh, construction of a treatment plant. But so when you talk about a treatment plant, mm. and, and you said you have benchmarked in Dar es Salaam and other places, and Gulu. You are, I'm, I'm sure you also have uh, other cities you are working with. Did you say Stellenbosch mm. in South Africa? Mm. Exactly. What is this uh, treatment treatment plant like? Now the treatment plant, they avoid the share, the, 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 the donors share the, the, the designs. We saw the designs, how they are going to look like. And then, uh, majorly, this is good. The, the entry point of garbage management is going to start from the household. So, uh, having a treatment plant alone does not, uh, uh, we are not quite sure that it's, it's going to be uh, uh, perfect. Because our, our garbage it varies. Yeah. Yes. Most of, mainly it's organic, the other is plastic. Plastic, you have yes. Met, metal and those yes. stuff like that. But people are not going to sort. They no, we are going to, to get, sort. But you know, but uh, the, how are you going to sense the people? No, for us, I've started to source, to, to source at home. Yes, we are pilot, piloting, piloting a, a project under this youth government fund. The second round, we are we are getting some young people who are going to work on sensitizing communities from household. We are even going to give them free to start sorting beans. garbage. Yes, you sort those uh, decomposable and those which are not. Mm. So that by the time we reach there, people would have known. So when you don't. Take the opportunity right now. It will be an enabling to ensure that it's also in Nansana should have a dusty bin. And these garbage survivors who come and collect, they have to include on their capacity. Because you, you can't have the same vehicle where they decomposable and those which don't, does not decompose. So it's the process that we are starting on right now. Because the time the, the garbage is reaches at the site in Imenvu, you should already know what you are going to do, whether it's plastic, whether you are going to make fertilizers. So this I'm just trying also to alert our, our private service providers to ensure that they start on improving their capacity in the collection of garbage. Yeah, but do, do you realize that it's going to be a very a huge a task for you to sensitize the people to start sorting garbage, f knowing that they have never been able to do that before? No, we have the manpower because now let me, in the municipality have over 50 groups which are going to work. We are, they are going to work with local councils. 
We are in, in our sensitization. We are looking at the local council ones. And the local council one is the lowest structure to a household. Do you have an idea how much garbage is, is created in, in, in the municipality? Because for Kampala, they say about 2,500 tons. Me, mine is and 56 tons. It's not much. How, and how much do you collect out of that? No, we, we, we are, uh, of course, the generation something like 300 metric tons okay. that we are able to collect 156 because the others of course well, where does the other go that's what i'm saying other people sometimes they don't want to pay they go and dump in the wetlands others of course use the burning burning is not allowed so that's what they do so sometimes you can't collect effectively so so what you're saying as madam mayor mm. is that almost half of the garbage in nansana is not collected of course no people don't because there is a protape a protape policy so along the along the streets where they are, where we have sweepers, our municipal tracker collects. But where are the household to change their behavior? They say they don't have the money. So what was they just dispose of at, at night? Some can even dispose in a toilet when you are not there. So you can't uh, with a grow with the, those are the challenges. When we need to ensure we change, we have need to, to change mindset of our people. So at the moment, if you look through even Kampala City in yeah. areas of Rubaga. You know, the cities are choking with the garbage because of what happened in Kitezi. As we speak, where is garbage being taken and how are you managing it now? Because I've seen in many places, you know, garbage heaps are becoming bigger and bigger. What is your situation like? Now, maybe for us, the method, you see me, I, I looked at it earlier. What I did, I have to empower the existing young people and women in those areas under affirmative action. So during 2017, when Saba went to, to Wusuju, they came to Dubrunji Bwansi. Then I told the town clerk, come on, you see. We have having a lot of garbage in Nansa. Now why don't you empower this group to become companies? Then you had to train them. And they became companies. So after we can, because these people, if they work in an area, they are easily that respected and received, other than getting someone from Mpiji to come and tender out to garbage. That's how even I've managed, me, I'm so free. That's how we even managed to be able to make Nansa clean. People already know the people, they stay in there. In fact, also uh, one of the methodal intervention on using crime rate within Nansan. So I'm proud they have also grown. In fact, those companies have grown. They have bought vehicles. Women are okay. And the young people are also happy. If you look at the director, you can't even believe they even started consecrating offices. So we are working with them to keep Nansan clean and green. I, I can imagine you've been trying to benchmark with the different cities. Yes. I, I, do you, does Nansam ha have some kind of a twinning arrangement with other cities in the world where you work along some... I hear of some municipalities, sometimes they twin with other cities and then you can have a working arrangement. What yes. kind of relationship you have, for example, with Stellenbosch? Stellenbosch is basically on neighborhood watch model. Okay. Yeah, that for us is, is particular. But uh, I went to Brazil, okay. I saw their model, because even when they even have vehicles that they come at a, at a site, and whenever they bring uh, garbage, plastic, it is, it is worked on there and then. So I also went to South Korea, I saw, saw they, have, they all have a good model of managing. So of course, copy, visiting is, uh, uh, that uh, peer learning is different from most of them. I mean, it was good, but when you look at uh, our incomes, acquiring such big vehicles it's also not easy but we are trying to see how can we also work on stone bush because it becomes easier if they're working with us on the neighborhood watch i was also saying the idea on how we can work with them to ensure that we also learn copy the same because in december we shall be visiting we shall be going to cape town and uh, we shall also be sharing what we have been so one of the plans that we are doing to ensure that we twin we stone bush on the same and, uh, you know, the issue of markets, because the markets are close to especially women who work in the markets. So how many markets have been built and are they thriving? I know there's a market just uh, at the junction there, um, as around between Nabueru and uh, I don't know other, other markets. Kafunda. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've seen a market there. Uh, Kafunda, um, um, I mean, when you look at Kafunda, it has been a slum, but it's upgrading. So I realized that uh, the kafunda we had is also now almost getting d diminished. But I'm looking at, uh, we have one, uh, one, more day, uh, one more market for the municipality because the Nansa and the market. I don't know whether you know around my store there. No, but okay. But, you yeah, but still also we have this, the other markets along the streets, which of course they are there. You can't do without, they are not only in here in Uganda. 
we really we work through the market structures. We also have one market in Kawempa. I think th at least each division has a market, which is a private market. The government only have one, and we have not devoted them to the capacity because look at the the nurse and dairy market is really out outdated. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand uh, there are plans. The government have five new cities. And uh, we don't know when, but there will be some saying 2025, and that would be probably would make your municipality, national municipality, city, or maybe part of Waki. So, you have an idea? Yeah, I heard it. Uh, the minister said it, but I think the proposal has been overtaken by events. Because in order to have a city, I know you are supposed to have over 500,000 people. And looking at the existing municipality, we have four municipalities. Okay, Ntebe is gone. We have Nansa, Nachida, and Machindi. When you compare cities like Hoima, it had one, municip one municipality. Fort Porto had one. Kabale had one. Yeah. So now what are you going to do with the three municipalities? It looks as if uh, they, are, they are not prepared. I don't know whether they know, they, they, they know what they were talking of. So I think Mia was proposing. It is high time they come back and see. What, how, how best can we demarcate? Because now having Wachisa as a city, I don't think it is really visible. Okay. Because now when you look at South Africa, we have Pretoria as a city, we have Durban, we have Cape Town. So I think uh, we need to see. Yeah, I'm told there are bigger plans of joining Pretoria to Johannesburg and have one mega. Uh, that mega one will be there. Yeah, mega yeah but mega you need to look at the capacity. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I really, they are already now, instead of decentralizing, they are. They are Recentralizing in terms of infrastructure because when you look at the three municipalities, we are able to each one, like in terms of Greater Kampala, each one was able to have a plan and we are be able to tamaka some roads. So, me, I'm with something which is impossible. All right, it's impossible. Um, uh, 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 yeah. Madam Mayor, we're going to take a break, okay. uh, but when we come back, my producer Stephen will open the line so the people listening tonight can call us and tell us what they think if they have their questions. They could be, they could be residents of Nansana or people who work in Nansana or they have uh, an interest in Nansana. Uh, pick your call and tell us. I'll be reading the numbers you can call. Or somebody has already even asked a question. She wants to, the mayor to tell us what is the vision, what is her vision of Nansana municipality. You, you'll be answering that when we come back from the break. Oh, no. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to 933 KFM and this is the hot seat. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest this evening is Regina Bakitenakazi, Mayor of Nansana Municipality and Chairperson Alliance of Mayors in Uganda. We are looking at challenges for urban authorities. Before I took a break, I asked you if you have an issue, you could just pick your, your phone and tell us what you think and maybe ask the, the mayor. And the Nansana Municipality, a question you could be having. Let me read the numbers so that you can have your say in this discussion. And the numbers to call are... 0751-933-900 or 0701-933-934. We already have a call online. Hello. Hello. Kamara, you're live at Bukega. You're talking to Juma. Juma, you're live. Okay, thank you so much, Juma, for joining us. Uh, what do you have to tell the mayor, Nansana Municipality? First of all, you beat mayor for, for me. Yes, she's listening to you <laughs> right here. Thank you. Uh, mayor, always, I know, Uganda, when it comes to delivery, Uganda will give examples from a developed country. Uganda are good at giving benchmarking. They go, Uganda government can send the officials to go abroad to go and do benchmark. But when you come back, I think the office or the, your offices are not all that functional. Now, my point is, you look at what happened at this. Really, if Ugandans have leaders who are responsible for garbage collection or for urban planning? Do we have, do we, does Uganda have urban planners? That's my only question for today. Thank you. Okay, uh, Juma in Busega. Thank you so much. I have another call online. Hello. Yes, Mr. Patrick. Thanks for that, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, may uh, welcome to the office. Hello? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, you're talking to a code. Oh, a code, yes. Go right ahead, sir. Uh, I have two concerns mm -hmm. for, for the mayor. Mm -hmm. One, she was uh, elaborating something about the PDM. Mm -hmm. What I didn't get well, if the PDM reached the Tanamunstad, mm -hmm. did, did, did the mayor take sponsor or an initiative to consult to find out which groups received this money, how little it was? Mm -hmm. 
mm. compared to her population in the area. If, the, if in some people, has she even found out, has it made, tried to change the level of these people? Okay. Two, it's about the, the rectory reform which is being amended by Honorable Robert Mao, the Minister for Justice. And one of the amendments saying, female leaders should take two terms in office. Should I assume that the mayor, after serving two terms in another municipality, is she coming, is she seeking, is she planning to seek for another position? Okay, thank you very much. Um, and the mayor is taking note of those questions, and uh, she'll be answering you at once, all of you. Let me take another call online. Hello. Yes. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. What's your name, and where are you calling from? This is Wanyaka Hussein, and I'm a resident of, of Katoke. You're a resident of Katoke? Yes, please. Okay, go right ahead. I am very happy to hear our mayor. You're welcome. Now, I, I, I'm just wondering... Why is Katok on North Stamak? Yet the most uh, area that is revenue in, in Nankana. All right. Really that town is, is so bad, it's just disgusting just, just when it starts to rain. All right. You have, you have made your point. Why yeah. is the road in Katoke not tarmacked, yet it is uh, providing a lot of revenue? I, I, I agree with you. I was once in Katoke in Kenya, Rwanda. The roads are bad. Uh, let me take another caller online. Hello. Okay. In the meantime, let me... Hello. I have a call online. Hello. Hello. Good evening, uh, Kamara. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Joseph Ochai. I'm calling from Mukono. Joseph Ochai and Mukono, you're on air. Go right ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, one of the things which I fail to understand with our municipality is that why don't we have economies of scale? Hmm. Uh, I see Nansana is talking about Movo, Kesti is talking about Dundu, Chira is talking about... Uh, I don't know where, Kazanga, you know, all these urban councils around, the urban councils in Greater Kampala, mm. for a long time have been using stasis. Why don't they come together, pull resources together, and develop one comprehensive sanitary landfill mm. with all these things the mayor has been talking about? And then they improve on the collection. Instead of everybody doing small, 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 because okay. if you want to generate energy, the, 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 the garbage of Nansana is, is too small to, to sustain even a five-year project. So you can't attract real investment because of uh, the capacity. All right, it's Joseph. Uh, well, yes, you, you have made your point, Joseph, and it's a very valid point. So allow me now to give you the remaining minutes, the mayor, to respond to you. Uh, I hope you'll be able to use that uh, time sparingly because we just have a few minutes in mind. <laughs> but you can go for them now. Okay, basically, thank you so much. I would like to thank the callers. First of all, the one who asked me about the vision. Mm. Of course, for us as, as, as uh, local governments, also it's a requirement to plan under the vision 2040. But specifically, Nansana is uh, to ensure that we remove, uh, we plan Nansana from an unplanned state to a planned one where you don't have slums, where you don't just build anyhow, where you have to develop the scope of developing plan, where you have to ensure that uh, climate issues are integrated with our plans mm -hmm. and also the infrastructure mm -hmm. development. So those are the issues. Uh, that is what we call Vision 2040. We are guided by the guidance from the ministry. Then Juma talked about the developing countries, which is okay that it is issued the benchmarking. Me, I think I'm one of the best mayors. When I go to benchmark, I come back and I implement. I think that's the value for money because it's not all about projects. I've talked about the soft, about the young people. We have talked about the neighborhood watch order because even if you, you do a lot, when there's no security, then you can't proceed. So for us, I've been benchmarking a lot. And uh, when we went to Gulu, I shared when we went to Dar es Salaam. But when it comes to the urban planners, Nansana, I think basically the whole country, national level, urban planners, they, they, they needed the motivation of studying at the university. Probably they are not being recruited. Because we look at the, uh, the report of the Minister of Lands of 2021-2022. They said uh, Uganda is at 35%. So now you see how bad we are. So I think that's why it is a call to ensure that how do you look at it nationally, public service, before you declare a city, we should have a report from an urban planner. And those are some of the weaknesses that we are finding as a cities and also municipalities. Okay. Then the issue of, of PDM is okay. Of course, as a mayor, this is a, a government program. 
and we, this is an evaluation time. We need to give a feedback. When you give them money, you can't trust them to know how to come there and then. So if there is already a problem and they say high population, the money, how, say how it, however it, it is, now when will people develop? Because when you give every financial, give out of the 30,000, only give five. Mm. So I think the way to go, they, they need to go back and see how can, can they revise the PDM. Can we put more money in agriculture? Because agriculture is something which is a priority, whether in the rural or urban area, where people can fit. I don't see any, any development in it. I think we, we need, they need to go back to think about the box. Then actually reforms, I think this, these are just uh, reforms. And uh, I know internationally, uh, uh, when you look at the number of females who are in, uh, in politics, mm -hmm. we are not yet there. I think they're almost like Uganda, I think Rwanda is doing well. But I think Uganda is just at 15. And remember, women are many. If, if USA, they are going to elect uh, Harris Kamara, then I think uh, uh, Honorable Mao, the Minister of Constitutional Affairs, should think how, uh, try to see how it moves on. But I think something that has to be looked at, and I will tell you we need to, inv to ensure that women are part of the system. Then Katoka issue is under World Bank. Okay. We are going to work on it. Let my friend stay, stay to stay put. That's Wamara, Wamara what? Wamara what? Then Mr. Chaya, the economic stuff still that we have had. But these are, when you look at uh, local governments, they have their own jurisdictions in the first place. Whatever he's saying, what were they doing? They say if you can work together, like Wakiso can part no, and, is, and one, vote one comprehensive. No, those are long plans, but I'm looking at an area because Kampala Capital Authority is an authority, which is uh, almost uh, it's an independent authority, which is uh, uh, probably uh, producing a lot of uh, so many a lot of garbage. So I think the Chitezi issue I thought of, and this thing they invited us in Hotel Africa now we invite the Minister of Energy among others to start and I think they were given four billion to 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 be able to 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 make energy. But our place is just history until when we had people who died. All right. So I think uh, the All issue right. of uh, the projects are okay. But uh, the, this is a national issue that shall be handled. Okay. At, uh, Ma at Madam Mayor, our, our time is out. What, thank very you, briefly, what's going to be your concluding remarks? Yeah, round? first of all, uh, thank you for for inviting me for this meeting. I think it's high time that urban authorities look at, uh, they have they, they, they develop what we call physical development plans. And after developing them, they should be able to implement and also ensure that they are in line with the national one. But periodic evaluation are very, very important. Leaders should spearhead and also, because whenever a problem happens, they don't talk about the technical. It is like the leader. So let us be supported. Let us have enabling policies and, and bylaws to ensure that we are able to build municipalities and cities of choice. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Me. Regina Bakitenakazi, Mayor Nansana Municipality and Chairperson Alliance of Mayors in Uganda, I want to thank you for the time you've given us. I want to thank you for your submission. I want to thank you for working hard for the people you lead in Nansana. And for you, the listeners, I want to thank you for the privilege of your company. Good night and God bless Uganda. <laughs>